Celticarps, part three. Uh, structural integrity and ergonomics. So before we get to talking about the sound of the harp, which of course is very important, it's also worth being aware that there's a fair amount of pressure on the frame of the harp, and you just wanna make sure that it's built well enough to last, right? That the design and the woods and the way it's put together is something that will stand the test of time. So and this is especially true, I think, when we're, because with the, with the lever harps, we're dealing sometimes with companies, right? Which the big companies, they obviously, their design has, has stood, the, stood the test of time and they typically offer warranties, right? Um, but we also are dealing with individuals because there's all sorts of individual craftsmen um, who make some wonderful harps. And in that case, it's, it's worth, you know, just finding out, do they offer a warranty? Um, how long have they been making harps? Can you talk to some of their their uh, people who own their harps uh, it's worth being aware of right just to make sure that and search online as well you know just to double check and make sure that the harp uh as i say has a fair amount of pressure now i'm not a harp builder um i don't really know what to suggest you look for but that's just something to be aware of um <clears throat> then the ergonomics and that's important as well so um, this is uh, another reason why you might want to get a slightly larger harp, say a 34 string harp, rather than some of the lap harps. They can be difficult to play. Like this lap harp doesn't have a, a stand or anything. So right now I'm just holding on my knees and you can't actually see that very well, I guess. But it's, it's a little bit awkward, right? I have to like grab it with my knees. I could put a, there's a hook for a strap. Um, sometimes people have little sticks that they rest them on. Or I could set up, and I can kind of do this here. I got it sitting on a little stool. So I could set that up. That would be my, can you see that? Yeah, that would be my best option, I think, most comfortable. But ergonomically, it can be a little more difficult to get a good setup. Whereas a, a, a bigger harp, it can be better. Um, now, one thing to be aware of is that, uh, so let's see, ergonomics, we're going to talk about the proper height. This is very important, right? Um, we want to, ideally, we might have a shoulder right here under the join between the soundboard and um, the neck. So um, for me, right now, this is actually a little bit too low because I'm sitting on a, a slightly higher bench. I'm sitting on my bench for my pedal harp. So ideally, I would be sitting on a lower chair, but ideally for me, I would actually have this harp be a little bit higher. So something to be aware of then is can you see? Right. So this harp has these legs on the bottom. Um, if it didn't, if it was just resting on the floor, that would be much more difficult. So, and, and various harp makers will offer legs, perhaps of varying heights. Um, but I, you know, while we could be sitting on the floor, be sitting quite low. In general, I think ergonomically, it's best to have our knees at least, a, you know, just a little bit below our hips. Um, so for me, ideally, this might be a little bit higher. And um, again, we can always sit on a slightly higher chair. It's a, so it's not always so great to sit on a slightly lower chair. So just being aware of, can you get a comfortable height on the harp? Um, harps should be designed to balance quite nicely on your shoulder so you don't feel like there's any weight on your shoulder. This pedal harp, right, weighs about 75, 80 pounds. It feels like there's very, very little weight on my shoulder when I have it tilted back because it balances very, very well. Um, so just be aware of that. And again, per perhaps if you're feeling a lot of weight, maybe that's because you're too far away from the harp or, you know, you're, or you're in a bad, bad position in terms of the height, but can you find a spot where it balances nicely and you feel like there's no weight on your shoulder? Um, also just the general weight of the harp and depending on your size and, and, and your circumstances, you may want to go for a, a lighter harp. Um, especially say, obviously in a, uh, something that's becoming more and more popular or, or common in North America, at least is, um, therapeutic music, uh, certainly on the harp. Um, so playing for example, in hospitals or hospices and there it's great to have like a really light little harp that maybe doesn't even have any levers and that you can just move around easily. You're not playing particularly, um, complex music, right? That's not really what you want to be doing. Um, and so there you're looking for something that's quite light. So just being aware of, of the 
weight of the instrument. And again, if you figure you're not going to move it around, it doesn't matter so much if, how heavy it is, but it certainly shouldn't feel heavy on your shoulder. Um, be aware of the design of the soundboard. So actually all of these harps are rounded soundboards, uh, uh, rounded sound boxes. Um, but a lot of lever harps are square. And I think that has to do with the fact that it's easier, right? Certainly I, you know, I would know how to go ahead and make a, a you know, like a square box, whereas to make the rounded box, I think is more difficult and perhaps more expensive. Hence the reason for the, the square backs. Um, but what can happen is that the square back may, you may feel like it cuts into your shoulder a little bit, or that as you reach around, um, maybe it's more awkward to reach around. So just being aware of those ergonomics as well. Um, and you know, how big the, the, the sound, bo or sound box is when it's on your shoulder. Um, obviously the bigger the sound box, the more sound we get, but if it's too big, again, maybe we feel like we can't reach around depending on our size and maybe we feel like it's, it's cutting into us more or something. Um, and finally, the final ergonomic tip I would suggest is checking to see how much space you have as you go up the harp. So what can happen is that as you get up to the last few notes, you can feel like it's pretty restricted, you know, this, and that's inevitable in most harps, but, um, it will vary like a lion Healy's pedal harps. There are some years where there's very little space and some where there's a lot. And you would prefer that there be a lot of space, even as you get up here towards the top end of the harp. So worth worth checking that as well. Um, and that's all I've got for ergonomics. We'll move on to sound.